Hi, I'm Jordi Smollett, and today we're going Behind the Looks. This costume was my own, actually, or most of it is. I'm not sure about the sweater, but my mom would always bring clothes to set and be like, she's gonna wear this. So I think technically my mom is the costume designer. <laughs> like I know these tights. I think these tights are for sure mine when I was a kid. I remember the feeling of working with the live audience, honestly, like going, feeding off of their energy. The, the sound of a laughter when you said something that they thought was funny, it was just so thrilling. Sitcoms back in the day with live audiences, it was the closest you were gonna get to like theater, right? Where you, you feed off the audience. So that's the thing I remember the most. Eve's Bayou, ah, oh. yeah. Okay, so one, I remember loving these pants so much. This was like the first film I did, which was a period piece. I really learned early on how period clothes are just made differently. Karen Wagner was the costume designer for Eve's Bayou and the costume designer for a, a show I did later on called Underground. And she is so exceptional when it comes to doing period pieces because clothes tell a story for your character. You know, the way they're tailored for that period, the scenes, like everything, you know. This was one of the first projects where all those things kind of, I became aware of those things when it came to the costume. <laughs> Tori, roll bounce. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is fun. Yeah, so this was about the skates and about the 70s. Another period piece I did. <laughs> I had braces and period clothes and roller skates. I mean, life doesn't get better than that, right? And funny fact is I actually in real life had braces on when I was cast as Tori. They had me remove the braces to put fake braces on. That is Hollywood, y'all. I had a lot of fun with, with the costumes because the, the 70s was just a fun period. Like, look at the colors of that, that purple, and it, it was a lot of fun. Jess, Meriwether. So this, this is the first season that I was on Friday Night Lights. I believe this is season four for the show, but my first season. And I was a cheerleader. Jess eventually becomes a coach. And so my wardrobe very much so changed um, from cheerleader attire while watching the game to more coach attire, which was, it was so cool to, to explore that arc in Jess and how, you know, she she was such an outsider. She wanted to be a part of the boys club and there, there was so much resistance with her with that. And so the clothes, we really tried to tell the story of how she's changing and shifting another period piece this time this takes place in the 1850s and karen wagner who as i said mentioned was a costume designer for eve's bayou we reunited and on this you know man that that era and that period for costume design it's it's so important to tell the story of rosalie's imprisonment She's an enslaved woman and, and she is bound to someone else, right? And that is a part of her arc is literally she is breaking free of those chains, right? And so if you look at the costume, so I'm wearing um, a corset underneath. I'm wearing a very thick material that is not conducive for the kind of hot weather outside. I'm wearing a petticoat and there's several layers underneath. Pretty much, I'm, I'm bogged down, I'm layered with, with, with layers that I need to, essentially you would want to be free of in the, under these circumstances. Um, she's literally bound, right? Like women back then always wore corsets. I remember reading and researching this period and seeing corsets were made even for pregnant women. It's just so oppressive, you know, and it, it it goes back to the oppression that Rosalie's fighting against. And so um, this costume eventually becomes shredded, eventually becomes torn away. She eventually does break free of this. Again, costumes, the costume designer and I are always working to try to tell the story of the character through the costume. I mean, it's, 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 essential, it's an essential element in building the character. I don't know that I talk much about that, but yes, it, it's 
costume and costume design in general is one of the most important elements of building your character. Black Canary, Birds of Prey, one of my favorite characters I've ever played, truly. Um, so what we have here is Canary, she's at the fun house with the girls, with the birds and Harley. Um, and we're about to go kick some ass, some royal ass, y'all. <laughs> and so I have Harley Quinn's bat. Um, I've shedded the, the suit um, jacket. But one thing that's important with Black Canary are the colors. As you see, I'm in blue, yellow, and black. And the belt that I'm wearing, actually, if you look really close, there is a canary design on this belt. In designing this, one of the things about Canary's art is that she's under the oppression, you could say, um, the grip of Roman, uh, played by one of my favorite actors, uh, Ewan McGregor. And so if you look at her, her costume, it kind of mirrors his in a way. Like even the stitching on the blue pants, it, it was always supposed to be like a, uh, a form of us trying to say like, oh, she's under his kind of, uh, under his oppression until she sheds it all off. We have to talk about Letty, Letty fucking Lewis. Dana Pink and I are soulmates. <laughs> Dana Pink was the costume designer on Lovecraft Country and we just had a field day in just sending images back and forth and really trying to build the character out of Letty um, through her costume. And here, I had some images that I had shown Dana, you know, some shorts and stuff like this. And she had this made by our amazing tailor. And, you know, it's a very simple thing, but it's really trying to express Letty's buoyancy, if that makes sense. That she, she can't be tied down, you know? She's very comfortable in her sexuality. She's a woman that doesn't really fit in this era, just the level of liberation that she has. We really try to use colors and tones. You'll see red with Letty a lot. Uh, red in real pivotal moments, oftentimes. Not always, but oftentimes you'll see red. And the, sh the sunglasses, you know. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with those sunglasses, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, Lizzie from Spiderhead. So really the idea behind Lizzie is that she is analog in a very digital world. She uses a Walkman to listen to music. She has, you know, made bracelets on her that she, that she stacks. She wears a lot of different colors, oftentimes in tie-dye, because again, she's analog, she's, she's life, she's soil, she's mother earth. The archetype was the mother with her. You're gonna see colors on her that you're not gonna see on anyone else because she is really a bit of the, the mother nature in the film. And because she is so analog, she's able to really threaten the whole system that Epnesi's building up, this synthetic version of emotions and manipulation and control. She and Jeff find a, a bond and a love with each other that is actually way more powerful and potent and just incapable of controlling because it's the real thing. So with her, her costume, you know, in this scene, um, this is the dark and flock scene, Joe really wanted also the makeup, he wanted he wanted to feel that she had gone, like that the makeup was the most heaviest at this point, actually. So you'll see a heavier eye makeup here. I think that's what we got, you know. 